to be all I want to be When will I be good enough to live my life and be free When will I dance till the morning lights up my day Well, 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 well mm, Okay, so I am here with Dr. George Halaz, but equally I'm here with Dr. Malice, right. Dr. George Malice, which is oh, pretty geez. amazing and pretty bizarre because uh, I don't feel there's a bone of malice <laughs> within your body, right. uh, George. Uh, immediately, when I just spoke to you on the phone, um, when I was in Los Angeles, I was, uh, I knew I was coming to a kindred spirit. I could feel it. And everything that, that I'm about is feeling life, feeling love, feeling community, feeling friendship, um, feeling hope, feeling liberation. Everything's about feelings for me. And because I've been able to release my feelings into, into life and into the world, I feel alive. For the first time, I feel totally alive in my life, and I love it. And we've just had such a laugh off camera. We've gone to get coffee. We've, um, you know, we immediately, like, what I loved about you was that, okay, I've got this arranged, guys. We'll go and get some coffee down at the local coffee shop. We walked around. We had a, we had a, a samba um, at Red Rumba, the coffee shop. And, you know... Tony doing his <laughs> And I, I just know that, you know, for, for me, this pioneer group that Alan Shaw, yourself, Pat Ogden, um, Dr. Russell Mears, etc., etc., Bessel van der Kolk, you name it, like, you're all real people. And part of me previously was, oh, my God, these people are going to be um, maybe sort of at a level that, that I, you know, they're not real people, maybe, because they're so, you know, clever at what they do and they're so brilliant. But of course, that, that was just an old belief system, which um, I realize is totally not the case as I've been in contact with you guys. Uh, but um, it's wonderful to feel this level of expertise in the trauma field of life, knowing that you are real people, you have a laugh, and it's just great. And so welcome to today and uh, the interview today. Well, thank you, David. I mean, if you're going to go back to the first moment we talked on the phone, I was sort of blown away, but not quite knowing where I was blown from and where to. <laughs> and then when you said, well, you know, if I'm coming to Australia from L.A., can we arrange a meeting? I thought, you know, what, what, what is going on here? <laughs> mm. And now, as you say, before on camera, where you've just described your visionary project, uh, if I was blown away before, that would be a mild state. <laughs> so I'm going to perhaps over the next few minutes recover my breath a bit uh, from <laughs> what I've heard. Good. I'm yeah. glad you're blown away. Yeah. I'm glad you're blown away mm. because uh, it, is, um, it feels like that to me, this wow about my life and my purpose, my life's mission, my life's purpose. Feeling that and really knowing that is just so amazing. And, you know, I know that the world, the day will come in the world when we're all living our mission and our passion. We've all got it within us. It's just a matter of uncovering the layers that, that uh, are around the heart, the hurts, the traumas that we've experienced, either past generations, which is your sense, part, of your, part of your sensational work, or, or current generation uh, traumas. So I'd like to open by sort of talking about uh, your your amazing work in the, um, the field um, of, of generational healing of trauma and uh, the work that you've done, um, re reference Auschwitz, etc., and the publications that you've been involved with and your understanding of generational healing of trauma? Well, it's really interesting you use uh, the expression of outstanding work because, like I mentioned, my understanding of your work is overwhelming and, and amazingly complex and broad. You say, no, it seems quite simple. To me, the generational trauma work seems so self-evident. Mm. The reason it feels so self-evident because uh, I come from a family of Holocaust survivors. My mother and late father are both survivors of the Holocaust. So in midlife, the uh, idea of 
acknowledging what they went through, I'd sort of accomplished. Mm -hmm. uh, the next stage was what impact, if any, if any, then I thought, if any, did it have on me? Mm. And so that really is where it becomes self-evident in retrospect. Mm -hmm. How could I even imagine that such an experience as they had not impact on me? Yep. Mm -hmm. And that is where I discovered the power of trauma and the power of witnessing. Mm. That you can actually split your mind out of its awareness. That's even sort of saying it in the wrong way because mm. I was born into that mind, yeah. so I actually had to discover and evolve that there was another way for my mind and being to be. Yeah, the power of witnessing is your fantastic um, new publication, isn't it? Well, I've got a chapter in the publication, the book, The Power of Witnessing, by Nancy Goodman and Marilyn Myers. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. And so their book has brought, and I feel very privileged uh, to be included in their a collection of essays, mm. because they brought together nearly 30 writers, uh, from mostly from the States, um, obviously here from Australia, mm -hmm. in a, a structure that is a book of its time, much like your visionary project is a project of its time and they structured the book as a triptych of three sections with witnesses who were there the generation of survivors myself the second generation and then the third the grandchildren of survivors and so witnessing is an experience that we all do and live but very rarely name in fact, mostly I think we know about witnessing in the legal system, mm -hmm. you know, being a, 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 a hostile witness, a friendly witness, a biased witness, reliable um, expert witness for a professional sometimes. But a psychological witnessing is a whole other area of human experience. And, mm -hmm. and that's what this book deals with. Mm -hmm. And my experience in that is the witness, the psychological witnessing of my mother's trauma. Okay. And so how, how has that, has it impacted on your life then? Uh, has it impacted? It's transformed it. Um, ha. Uh, I, I, you mentioned how your personal experiences have really, uh, you look back and you can't believe how you were. Mm. And then the enormous shattering of your life at one phase. Yeah. And then the stages of the repair that you undertook yes. in so many modes and fields that you've mentioned. Yeah. Now, I think all of us who at some stage, in a way, have, I don't want to use the word courage because it's not, we don't have a choice in it when we have a so-called breakthrough. I don't like the word breakdown, mm -hmm. but a breakthrough. Yes. Because in fact, looking back, that's what it is. Exactly. It's not a breakdown. Exactly. If anything, it's a breakdown of one's older ways of relating. Yeah. But like a, a, a new birth inside, it's a breakthrough of the interior. Mm. Now, I think our shared experience in trauma is that our interiors are sealed up after trauma yes. for good reason. Yes, yes. And many of us have no idea that we've actually got anything sealed up inside. We just think that is how we are and who we are. Mm. Yes, it's so great to hear. It's like oh. I'm hearing myself. Right. I'm like, please. No, I'm saying this about both of us. <laughs> I'm overjoyed but, oh. to hear what you say. It's right. wonderful. So can you, would you be prepared to share how the breakthrough for you and that, that, that period of your life? Well, interestingly, not dissimilar to what you've said about yours. It was within the year or two after my father's passing, mm -hmm. uh, which is now 15 years ago. And then my mother decided to give her testimony to the Spielberg Foundation, the yes. Visual History Foundation in LA. Yes. And that was soon after Schindler's List in the mid 90s oh, yeah. was the film. Yeah. And as we all know, Spielberg then started his testimony project. Yes. So my mum became one of the 50,000 worldwide survivors yes. 
who gave her testimony. Wow. Wow. Now, what I <laughs> registered is that I could not bear to watch her testimony. And being in the profession of child psychiatry, the idea of a child not being able to face a parent's issues is very familiar to me here in my consulting room. Yeah. And I had to turn the experience on myself. Why could I not watch my mother's testimony? Yeah, why couldn't you? Because it traumatized me. So this is where I didn't know about witnessing. Mm. I just knew I had a, a withdrawal reaction mm. and I could not cope. And so then, of course, being a slight workaholic and uh, not being satisfied with not knowing, mm. I started researching the impact of testimonies, which is where I came across um, Shoshana Feldman and Dory Laub's book, The Testimony, yes. published in 1992, 20 years ago this year. So in this 20 years from that book to now The Power of Witnessing is where my transformation occurred by talking with colleagues, belonging to groups of Holocaust survivors, workshops. Fortunately, my mother took a very active interest, not only in my work, but also her own trauma. And she joined Holocaust survivor groups, child survivor groups. And here. How did she give the testimony? Was it a, a video film Video testimony? film like this really? setting wow. with an interviewer and for yeah. three and a half, four hours. And I actually was at the end in, as, as the, the protocol for those testimonies. Yeah. Uh, survivors or next of kin were asked to join in at the end. So it was a, a video testimony, yes. And so were you able to, you were able to give some uh, yes. testimony at the end? At the end, yes. But you couldn't watch your mother's at the time? At the time I could. It was interesting. I was there because it was a, a group like here. Mm. But when it came to watching it on a screen oh. by myself, I couldn't. Oh, okay. So while it was a shared experience, it's almost as if the witnessing spread around. Oh, that's beautiful. Whereas the intensity of mother-son or traumatized survivor and vicariously traumatized son was overwhelming. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah. Powerful. So, hence, your understanding of witnessing was, yeah. was born. That, that's how it was born. And then, of course, it had to be blended with the knowledge. And that's when I came across our joint friend, Alan Shaw. Yes. And uh, a decade ago, he introduced the notion of relational trauma, uh, an absolutely radical idea mm. in the field of trauma. It, it was un unthinkable to use that expression, relational trauma. Isn't that brilliant to have these um, groundbreaking yeah. uh, moments where you know, people are like, wow, never heard that before. Like yeah. the world is, is round? What? You're crazy. <laughs> You're totally off your trolley. Well, Brilliant. in fact, Alan's faced a lot of that um, disbelief <laughs> because he's talking about a round world yeah. and there are so many flat worlds around mm. of people with flat world ideas. Yeah, yeah. it's just a, it's a change of consciousness, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Which exactly. we all, we've gone through when you look back generations. Yeah. So it's wonderful to be party to this yeah. and hear your amazing mm. journey through that and involvement with it. Mm. Okay, so can you explain a little bit further onto basically you didn't realize before the interaction that was happening in I call it the field of energy I don't yes. know whether you yeah, yeah. yeah that feels mm. the same for you mm. um, and I think I just translated into the energy in psychological terms as Alan Shaw and others and myself now use its levels of arousal Mm -hmm. And we've got a window of tolerance where the energy is manageable. We ebb and flow. Mm -hmm. At the top, we get hyper-aroused. We get, and then overwhelmed in the extreme. Mm -hmm. Below, we get hypo, and really the withdrawn. Mm -hmm. And it's these extreme states that can lead to the traumatic state. Yeah. So they're the energies in language, yes. So how did you move forward with the, um, from the not being able to look at the personal testimony to the group? How did you, you continue on that journey? 
healing. Right. The continuation actually started that I used uh, the very basic uh, tool, research tool in child psychiatry called a split screen, mm -hmm. where there's an image of a mother and child on the one screen that's synchronized. And you can see usually used for mother's babies. And so you can see the interaction by freeze frames, each 1 24th of a second, what happens to the facial expressions, the gestures, and so on. So I thought, if that can work for babies, why not take my mother's testimony, get myself videoed viewing it, and synchronize it, and then allow me to become a researcher of me. Witness. Be of a witness yourself. of myself. Exactly. Ooh, ooh. exactly. How powerful is that? Well, and that's 10 wow. years of, yeah, that's how powerful, yeah. yeah. So then what happened as you were doing that? Well, I had headaches. I had all sorts of known physical expressions of trauma. Mm. So I could turn it off. Mm. So I had a little bit of regulating my own trauma. Yeah. The powerful part of it was that it was my mum's image and my image that were now actually being activated in my mind out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So over time, this became a, a major research project, and then it became a number of presentations at conferences, at Oxford actually, Remembering for the Future was one of the 2000 conferences in Poland, in uh, the Jagiellonian University, Krakow conference on can trauma be transmitted? And then in my teaching of trauma to uh, mental health professionals locally here in Melbourne, mm. and invited uh, speaking engagements all over the place locally and overseas. Mm. And so that became the experience of living what previously was totally disconnected. Mm. And so incrementally, little by little, week by week, month by month, I integrated the experience. And as I mentioned, my mum was part of a number of self-help groups. Mm. And so we would then have conversations about these experiences. So we gradually re-engaged with each other at levels we both uh, had disconnected from our respective traumas. Mm -hmm. So we came back from very exiled places yeah. and we started to very delicately approach and broach subjects and experiences to the point that in May of this year, uh, for the first time in our lives, the two of us flew to Washington for the book launch wow. of The Power of Witnessing. Wow. You see yeah. this, the whole, your body language, almost, I mean, the way I read it is that you were like these sort of poles apart really to yeah. an extent living in the same family and because yeah. this healing starts to happen and really the self-responsibility that comes within the healing journey that's what I hear your mother you both actually going within yeah. and then this coming together this reconnection I mean and then this trip to Washington is like yeah. beautiful because for me, certainly on my journey, this reconnection with myself, healing within my family, mm -hmm. as the truth begins to be revealed yes. at a particular point in our life. Interesting that both our fathers passed away. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that was? Because for you, I, I understand for me, but for you, why do you think that, that your father passed and then any... I've thought quite a lot about this, mm -hmm. the timing of why then, mm -hmm. and the best I can come up with is that when my mother and father, who were married for nearly 50 years, when they're a unit, there is very little space to approach these deep issues mm -hmm. because they had to keep their trauma sealed up. Mm -hmm. That is the nature of a survivor's mind. Mm -hmm. To start a new life and a new beginning, raise a small child, you know, escape from a revolution in Hungary, all that, it's quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So their priority was to put that out of mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, putting it into the right brain, out mm -hmm. of mind. Mm -hmm. A child has zero chance then of connecting to that. 
Now, when my father passed away, my mother is no longer able to be sealed up in that relationship. Yes. And she then gives her testimony. Yes. Why does she give it then? Mm. I think we're both starting to be um, mobilized by the grief and the loss and the shock. Mm. And nothing less than something as deep and powerful as next of kin passing yes. can really find the combination lock to open that up, I think. Which is the lock of... Yeah, yeah. What is it the lock of for you? Well, for me, the translating the lock, it's the frozenness starting to defrost. So I use a different metaphor than yeah. lock and key. Yeah, yeah. Because in trauma, what I would say, we lived a frozen family life. With his passing, my dad's passing created so much heat that I think my mum's frozenness was brought into the present day. She was frozen from 1944-45. My frozenness from perhaps before birth into the frozen environment, mm -hmm. and then going through a revolution and escaping and so on from Hungary, I think my frozenness melted me. So here we have two frozen cores starting to melt. Yeah. And as it melts, these little tendrils, which actually when you started gesturing, I thought, mm. Oh, that's neuroplasticity. It's just the fibers actually <laughs> moving inside each of our beings yeah. towards each other. Yeah. So I think it was something about the frozenness and the heat of grief mm. melting enough mm. for us to initiate something. It yeah. was unknown then. So, I mean, from both our perspectives, from a persp perspective of death within our family has come this great healing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now, I would actually mm. use a slightly different word mm -hmm. for the simple reason I used the word healing with a very, very dear friend, uh, Daisy Miller, who yeah. was connected with the Visual History Foundation. Yeah. Now, I interviewed Daisy and uh, before the interview, she said, why do you want to interview me? I said, look, you're a child survivor and I'd like to know how you got through all this healing. Mm. And she nearly bit my head off. Really? And I said, what's just happened? She said, George, I expected more from you. <laughs> and I said, more than what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Using the word healing, she said, do you really think I can be healed? Mm -hmm. Good question. And I, and I said, no. Mm -hmm. So she said, why are you using it? Mm -hmm. So I thought, there goes the interview, there goes the friendship, like that was a, a hot moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she rescued me and Daisy said, George, have a think, try to find some other word. Yeah, yeah. And so then I, I, I found the word that I really felt, which was yeah. repair the trauma. Uh huh. And she said, I'll go with that. Okay. So, so it's repair, not healing. Okay. I mean, interesting one. Let's just stay on this for a moment because um, we're building the World Healers Electronic Network. And, uh, and our principle is that we're all world healers, we're all equal in love, he we're all on a healing journey. When, are we, when we are, for sure. And I'd love to speak to Daisy about that and say, Daisy, you know, we're all on a healing journey. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the word healing. We re are recontextualizing oh, right. what healing means. Right. Because it's all elements of life. It's music, it's laughter, it's coffee, yes. it's fun, it's sex, it's cricket, it's football. Like I was speaking to you, we're all on a healing journey. Mm. We are all world healers. We all have the ability. What is healing? Healing is love. Mm when we feel more love, when we give more love, when we receive more love, give, receive, give, that is healing. Mm -hmm. yes. When are we healed? Is it, a, is it a place where we all come to peace within ourselves and we all come together as a unified world in peace? Yes, it is. Do I believe it's possible? Yes, I do, Daisy. And I know that. And that's why I'm here to facilitate that for people around the world every man, woman and child to have the opportunity to realize that we're all world healers, we're all on a healing journey, we have all experienced trauma, we're not victims, we're not victims at all, we are all equal. Life is being how it's been, 
for a reason. So that we could, you know, we're broken hearted, we've been broken hearted, our parents have said something to us, we've been abused, we've, we've been adopted, you name it. We've all experienced death, trauma within our lives. It's a new way of looking at life. So I would love to interview Daisy mm. and um, I'd have a field day. <laughs> She's um, in LA, so great. when you go back. Because um, <laughs> for me, it is a new way of looking yeah, at yes, life. Yeah. And when are, well, yes, when we're healed is when we're all totally unconditional. Mm. When we're in unconditional love. Do I believe that's possible? Yes, I do. Mm. I do, and that's why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm very passionate, as you can see, yeah. and would love to meet her. So, for you, just based on that point, you know, do, do how do you feel about? Do you believe it's possible to heal? I mean, I call them trauma vortexes. Yes. So, how do you feel about the healing of these trauma vortexes? Well, David, I can give you a very practical example because mm -hmm. the way I did relate to it was in preparation for the 10th anniversary last year mm -hmm. of 9-11, mm -hmm. that I was involved with a Washington group from two years before and actually with the Smith's farm in, in Washington. And what I said then was unless you acknowledge the anniversary event of a trauma, there will be the chance of re-traumatizing people a lot more. Mm -hmm. So my message is very simple, is awareness of the power of trauma. Mm -hmm. And as you say, David, trauma happens. That's not the issue. It's whether or not we've got the ability to repair or heal. Yes. Now, I hear what you're saying about recontextualizing, yes. I come from a very, very narrow, narrow, narrow subspecialty. Mm -hmm. And I have to be very careful in talking about all the modalities of healing mm -hmm. and remain within the frame of treatment mm -hmm. uh, as a professional. As a, as a citizen of the world, I have no problem with healing. Mm -hmm. But within my professional... Um, languaging of experience, I still would think I'd be using repair for various conceptual and visual metaphorical reasons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That a healing, as with Daisy, implies that it can be a total return to where it was, but perfect. Whereas none of us go back to where we were. We're not healed in that sense. Mm. We've moved on mm -hmm. to become someone else through a reparative process. And then we can say we're healed from who we were, but it's, maybe this is too languagey stuff, mm. I don't know. Well, it's, yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I hear what you say. I think for me, though, it is a return to love. Yes. It's a return to love. Yeah. And I think mm. there's, there's, there's a, well, I know there's a publication out there, a return to love. Yes. Where have we come from? Love. Where are we going back to? Love. Right. That is healing journey. Mm. That is a healing yes. journey for me. It's yeah. simply that. Yeah. Whether you call it repair or healing, mm. it's one and the same thing. Repair, are we really repairing or are we taking away layers of protection? Are we taking away, because we've yes. both talked about this, mm. the, 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 you know, the defreezing, the defrosting yeah. of the heart. Mm. The heart genuinely, my heart wants to give to the world. Mm. To everyone. Well, and from everything you said it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's radiating it. So talk about the warmth and Thank the you. defrosting. Yeah. The way I heard as I listened, now I think I'm starting to get a sense of why I was so overwhelmed. <laughs> because you are actually, la not languaging, living, you know, with your smile, with your dancing at the Red Rumba, <laughs> with your colourful outfit and, and your vitality. You have what I would say is vitality affect feeling, yeah. just oozing out, radiating. Okay. Now, that is what defrosting trauma is about. Mm -hmm. And so everything you described about the three project fits with you may well defrost the world's trauma. Well, we will. It's a collaboration, mm. you know. I said to you, I, I, I've taken myself out the equation. Our symbol is one of surrender and victory for the WEM mm. project, the World Healers Electronic Network. And that's what I've done. I've gone, you know, I'm second. I'm on a journey. I'm here for a reason and a purpose. It's not about me. It's about collaboration, coming together. We are all world healers. We're all mm. equal. And that is the most powerful movement of, of 
you know, the age. This is what, you know, we're, there's yeah. no separation between us. We are, let's just come together. Mm. That's simply do that and change mm. the face of the world. Mm. Change the face of the world. It's not difficult. Well, in friendship and community, and it all comes back to this connectivity that you were with your mother. Mm. We need to do that. We do it with ourselves. We then, our families are impacted immediately yes. by our own healing. Even if our mother, and you know, my mother doesn't want to do any personal work. Mm. She said, David, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. And I'm like, I respect that. That's something that, I was Mom. going to say to respect. But yeah. what's happening is that, that we are healing regardless because we're in the field. So my doing my personal journey and work, speaking the truth, mm. being out here is healing our family. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. So actually they don't even have to do it. Yes. I mean, mm. you know, if you put a radiator into a room, one doesn't have to want to warm up. No, that's right. <laughs> it's just how it is. <laughs> it just automatically yeah. happens. Yeah. I love your descriptions. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> oh, it's such fun, this. <laughs> it is such fun. I'm having a ball, right. as you can see. And Likewise. Yeah, well, with, with your <laughs> infectious laugh, it's hard not to be warmed up with you. So there it goes. And I'd just like to say, mm. I think while you say it's not about you, and I understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. I would actually like to reinstate you in it at every minute incremental process. Because this is an incremental process, and it cannot happen without the attention to detail. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it's on the global scale, as I hear your vision unfold, mm -hmm. whether it's your personal journey, which I before we filmed, I heard, mm -hmm. and on the phone. Mm -hmm. It's the incremental attention and sustained attention over time that is the journey of whether healing or repair. Yep. So I would like to say, I hear your wish not to be personalized, but I'd like to reinstate your attention to detail mm -hmm. as without it, it can't happen. Yeah. Okay, that's Thank you really very much. important. Yeah, I mean, that ties me into what we say as an organization is uh, the organization that takes no responsibility for your healing journey because we, we can provide the tools and the toolboxes mm -hmm. and the opportunity for all, the hope, the vision, the encouragement. They've, people have got to have the courage to face the emotions. Yes. It's yes. all about emotional yeah. health, yeah. basically. Yeah. But it's not, you know, it's not an easy journey. But when we come together and realize that we can support each other, we're not on our own, we're all on a healing journey, we've all experienced trauma, then everything changes because we're like, ah, I thought I could never share that. The shame of sexual abuse, do I feel any shame now? No, but I did. I did, yeah. I yeah. did. huge, I understand shame, and it, it restricts, it almost disables. I spoke, you know. Not almost. Alan Shaw was the one of the pioneers who said shame is the major primary trauma of life. Mm. And as you went like that, yeah. babies feel shame and you know it by their posture. Wow. Their head bows down, no mm. eye contact, mm. shoulders droop, there's a lot of internal changes mm. and they're never taught. Mm. It's an innate state of shame. Yeah. Now anyone who brings that about in another person, even unknowingly, is traumatizing them, yeah. and the person shamed is traumatized without knowing it also. That's brilliant though, because just you sharing that on, on camera to the world, that parents can, and, you know, and people in the world can just look for that. Just that one little nugget of, of gift that you've just mm. shared. It's like, wow. Parents will be like, oh, if my, so if my baby is, you know, my child is like this, and they're in that posture, this just, you know, almost like curling up mm. and going inward, something's happening. I mean, what a great gift, just that one thing mm. shared. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. But yeah. The iceberg would then go, what happened in the fraction of a second before mm. that your baby actually went like that? Mm. And it could be as trivial as a glance like that. Yeah. That is enough to trigger a shame reaction. Yeah, yeah. And this is why viewing, visualizing faces, for myself, say, on a video, yeah. is so potent and powerful. And you use that in your work um, yeah. here now. With, yeah. We're in your fantastic space with books, with children's table down here, small chairs, uh, beautiful, lots of chairs around. You work with groups of up to 10. 
Uh, well, with yeah. families, and sometimes if they have, say, 10 or more children, then there's a dozen people. Yeah. So because of an assessment of a child is essentially an assessment how that child is in their family. Mm -hmm. So if you don't see the child in the family, you can't assess that child. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a child without a family. It may not be their biological or original, but no child can survive without yeah. adults to provide. Yeah. And so I have to assess the group they're in. So yeah. how do you work, George? Could you explain how that works on, on the, this level of your work? Well, usually uh, I receive a phone call from uh, either a referrer, a school a psychologist, a paediatrician, GP, a teacher, mm -hmm. saying we've got a concern about a child, or a parent says we've got a concern about our child. Yeah. So I arrange an assessment meeting, one of four. Yeah. And in those meetings, I meet once with the whole family, mm -hmm. once or twice with the child, and then a feedback. That is, I provide what I've understood and assessed and offer my recommendations to the parents and the child or children. Yeah. And then leave them a little bit of breathing space to decide what to do with that. Nice. Yeah. And then, you know, whether it's individual therapy or treatment or family therapy, uh, or parent therapy with one person and the child with someone else, plus or minus medications if there's indication. And so that's the formula, as it were, mm -hmm. for child psychotherapy, psychiatric treatment. Okay, and um, I mean, you, you're a psychiatrist, an author, a speaker. I need to make that clear. So from, the, from this work that you, you do, do you find that parents are always receptive to this? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Okay, why and, would that be, do you think? Well, parents shouldn't be receptive mm -hmm. to a, a, a stranger mm -hmm. getting involved with their family life. It, it's mm -hmm. most natural that there should be a boundary and you're outside and we're inside. Mm -hmm. So you really need to get permission and gain mm -hmm. permission mm -hmm. and slowly build some level of trust yep. that you're acting on behalf of the family. And how do you get that over then to the to the mother that's or the father? I don't want this bloke involved with the, with my family. Well, I'm at the end of the line of desperation calls mm -hmm. because a parent usually has consulted their family, uncles, aunties, grandparents, cousins. They've gone down to the local shop, chatted over at Kmart or Coles or Woolies at the out checkout. You know, my child's behaving. Oh, I know what it is, and that doesn't work. They go to school and the school counsellor. Uh, they go to their GP, they've had OT, occupational therapy, sometimes uh, visual testing and hearing testing and it's all normal and the child's still not behaving. Yeah. Then finally someone says, I think you need to go and see a child psychiatrist. Yeah, because ADHD is your speciality oh, yes. now. Can right. you talk about <laughs> ADHD please and uh, you know, what are, you know, right. what, just talk about it and then the solutions. Look, ADHD has been one of the major issues in child psychiatry. It's one of the most common presentations for the last 20 years, since mm. the early 90s. It is one of the most misunderstood conditions of children because the word literally stands for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Mm -hmm. Now, that is something no one doubts, that you can see a child who's got low level of attention. Mm -hmm. They're all over the place, yep. in f not focusing. Yep. And they're jumpy and mm -hmm. climb up chairs, settees. I've had the palm leaves torn off here. So you know what hyperactive is. Yep. The difficulty comes whether that's an illness or a set of symptoms. So what I usually say, look, if your child had fever, you may give them Panadol and they'll get better mm -hmm. with the fever, but you've done nothing for the cause. Mm -hmm. So, in ADHD, there's a whole lot of prescribing of Ritalin-like substances, amphetamines, yep. basically. Yep. Yep. And most children get better. I said, great, it proves nothing to me, mm -hmm. because we know nothing about the reason for this attention deficit, yep. hyperactivity. Okay. So, back about 10 or 12 years ago, we wrote a book called Cries Unheard, yeah. and renamed the same acronym as attachment disorder, mm. not attention, nope. and hyperreactivity, not hyperactivity. Now, hyperreactivity is one of the hallmarks of a traumatized child. Yeah. 
It's what you see in Vietnam vets, uh, Gulf vets, hyperreactivity. For a sudden noise, they have a massive reaction. Yep. It's because the brain architecture has been changed by trauma. Yes. This is where Alan's work comes in. Yeah. So the parents say, but my child's not been to war. I said, really? Family war? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Relational trauma? Yeah. Wow. Now, once we get to that point, we start looking at some of the different causes of attachment deficit, yeah. where there's no regulating of the child, yeah. and hence no attention. Mm -hmm. It's one plus one equals two. Cause and symptom, you treat the cause. Yeah. Back to why is the attachment so haywire? Yeah. And what, what, how do you find, I mean, what is the correlation through these different cases that you work with from the, you know, do, what is the, is there a correlation there, a pattern? Look, uh, it's an, a wonderful question. I actually, in the Melbourne community, am known to have this view on ADHD, mm -hmm. which is gaining more and more traction and popularity and, and acceptance yeah. with Alan's work on relational trauma, child development. Back in the 1990s, I was not a really popular doctor speaking like this. Really? Truly. Yeah, <laughs> no. yeah, yeah. Well, that's probably a good sign then. So yeah, there's been, over 20 sign. years, there's been a real movement of attitude yeah. along with this awareness of trauma, yeah. which is why when you asked earlier, what's the single thing in, in a message is to give recognition to the power of trauma and the power of witnessing the trauma. If you miss out on that, you've missed the boat. Yeah. So do parents, does a light bulb go on for parents? It's like, oh my gosh, yeah, you know, the, what's going on in our family or that, uh, you know, trauma that I have is impacting on my children. Do they well, get this that? Is, yeah, this is where it gets a little, one needs, I think, to deploy an incredible amount of patience and tact. Because mm -hmm. the first reaction of most parents is, oh, so you're blaming me. And it's not about blame. No. I mean, no. one of the a very, very memorable case was a, a family who came to me after visiting a local professor of mm -hmm. child health, mm -hmm. and they were ready to get the prescription. Yeah. And when I asked what's been happening, they said, oh, one of the parents actually had a recurrence of cancer. Yeah. And that's why the behavior went like this. Yeah. So I said, well, what did the professor say? She said, well, that's interesting, but not relevant. <laughs> and mm. I thought, Oh my goodness, mm. how can a child's relationship to a parent who's being hospitalized, intensive care, not impact on him? Exactly. I, I could not well, make sense of it. No, we're emotional beings. I mean, we know that. We're emotional beings. It's all could about emotional the, could health. Could you tell the professor? Yeah, I will do. We're <laughs> telling, I mean, we're not telling. We're just, you know, we're just revealing the truth, really. I mean, it's yeah. all about revealing the truth. And, you know, it is about, again, working in collaboration. You know, I said to you, it's about, for me, I wouldn't be here without allopathic medicine. Yeah. The, the healers, the wonderful practitioners out there, the doctors, the nurses, you know, the, the drugs that have helped me to survive, Valium, Siroxat, yeah. wouldn't, you know, thank God. Yes. Thank God, this is not about a competition. No. It's about a collaboration. I'm here because of that. Let's all come together and stop warring with each yeah. other yeah. and going, you're right, I'm wrong. You're right. Let's just come together and go, you know, we can, we can deal with the root causes yeah. of disease. Yeah. And we equally need, you know, we need the cancer treatments that are there to be able to help us. My father survived, he had a brain tumor and um, locked in his brain. He survived five years where his prognosis was up to 12 months. That was because we had a combination of Western medicine and um, a more mind-body-spirit, shall we say, yes. way of looking at it. I don't like to put any labels on it. Yeah. But we just opened up that both avenues, and they work beautifully, live five years. So I'm a huge fan of what we have in the world right mm. now, drugs that we have in the world, because we need them. Absolutely. But equally, we need to look at the root cause and come together, that's mm. all. Yeah. and in collaboration and that is happening now across yeah. the world that is our movement that is what we're part of so uh, for me it's never about casting mm. stones or judgment yeah. on anyone yeah. because again we're all equal what we're all trying to do we're all here to help others that are in you know mm. in life in our professions unless we're so traumatized and we're so in ourselves and so many layers around our heart that we harm others yes 
Yeah. But that's only that's because really, of trauma. Now that is a yeah. really, really important danger of neglecting this area of human experience. Mm. That, uh, as Alan now writes quite a lot about this uh, in his most recent book, The Science of the Art of Psychotherapy, the behaviour we call enactment is one of the most common ways we deal with trauma when we don't know that we're traumatized. Mm -hmm. We actually visit it on someone else. Mm. And that's a real danger yeah. if we don't become aware of trauma. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. So, right, I'm gonna look at you and I am going to... You are. I am. And you've moved in, so yeah, you, something's that, gonna that, happen. Do you not like that? You no, know? no, I'm just... Preparing yeah. for the something. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking into your eyes, George, Dr. George Olaz. And I see a very deep thinker, somebody who has great depth of um, wisdom of... Um, you have a brain that is being... that is working at a thou... you know, this a thousand speed a minute, I want to say. It's like it's working in such an amazing way. I can almost see this, the neural pathways and everything going in your mind because you've done a lot of personal work um, and you are, one of our pushes is leader as healer, healer as leader, that when we really step forward like you have and, 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 and go within ourselves like you have, we, we really can transform ourselves, our families, working from that nucleus mm. outwards and then yeah. the world. Yeah. And then the world, which is what you've done, you are extremely humble. It, it's quite amazing to, to, to be sitting across you and to feel how humble you are. And you, are, you have a depth of pain, an understanding of pain and trauma from your personal journey that has led you to to this wonderful place in your life and um, I'm, I'm honored to be sitting by you and uh, I have no idea what I can start to feel the trauma mm. that your family have experienced and um, well, because of that I'd like to just include that she's not physically here yes but my mother is sitting right here hearing and <laughs> receiving every word that's coming to me, she is my mentor mm. in this journey. And as you said, had you not been through your trauma, you wouldn't be vital now. <laughs> in the same way, had she not been my mentor, I would know nothing of this, yeah. literally nothing. So I'm not sure if that's humility, it's the truth. Yeah, and you're a real person, you're a real man because of being able to touch the, the vulnerability and the truth of who we are and who you are. You've touched that within yourself. I can see mm. it, I can feel it. And that's the great gift and, of... And the watery eyes yeah, show it. Yeah, <laughs> of manhood. But that's the truth of manhood. Yeah. It's like when we show our vulnerability, when we really expose ourselves we become true men and women in this world and we we flourish and we blossom it's not about the layers of protection it's about removing mm. the layers of protection giving permission to each other mm. to you know to to feel to feel i think that is so underrated to give permission because to give permission you really need to be in a relationship with the giver the other part, of course, is to receive the permission. <laughs> you can give all you want. If it's not received, it's not going to work. Mm. So it takes two to actually complete the circle. It does. And that is mm. our, you know, our organization is about where the WEN network, the World Heal Electronic Network, yes. giving and receiving. Yeah. This is yeah. love. Yeah. I mm. love myself. Mm. I love my courage. I love my strength. I love my vulnerability. I love my personality, I love my bald spot, I love my big nose. I'm here, I am a loving being because I love myself now, because I've come to balance within myself. Yes, you have. I've come to that balance. Is, that is it. You have actually achieved a balance 
against all odds. Yeah. Now, that is if there is a goal mm -hmm. in a journey of trauma, because trauma is so unbalanced. It's such an extreme. Mm. You know, in the languaging of extremes, it's in exile. Mm. Now, exile and to be in balance, with, and they're usually opposites. Mm. So to come from exile to balance is more than most people can have as a lifetime journey. Yeah, but I believe that's absolute, that, 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 that it will be available to all, subject to them wanting that the courage to step up, the courage to go, yes. Because I said to you, our organization says, you know, we, haven't, we don't take any responsibility for your healing yes. journey. We provide the tools, that, like mm. you are here. You have the tools mm. for the families to come. Are mm. they prepared to really look at themselves, yeah. the mothers and fathers, mm. truthfully, and really go, you know, I really do want my child to live a fulfilled, blossoming life, but I will look at myself as well. Mm -hmm. And it's not about casting stones. It's about, mm -hmm. just let's just say we've all experienced, we've all had our parents that have said things, done things to us where we didn't feel love. Simply that. Let's heal those wounds mm -hmm. within the child within us all, across the planet. Let's do it. Let's come together. And it's happening. Mm -hmm. And it will happen. May you have every blessing <laughs> in your venture. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Bless you for a wonderful interview and time in your busy you. schedule. And I look forward to a lot more time spent together. Thank you. Thank you.